Friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality, to your health and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment to moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you wanna wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you, we welcome your calls. On the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our call-in number, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, formulations, ingredients, skin health issues, questions or comments about our Truth Skin Health products, 844-236-6010 is our number. And of course, if you just want to contribute to the conversation, we welcome your calls. 844-236-6010 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470 or head over to my blog, pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com. You can also go to brightsideben.com, order products right off the website, or you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. We can help change the world one health challenge at a time, and you can make some money while you're doing it. Call the phone team at 866-735-2470 or head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And, of course, if you want to check out our Truth Skin Health products, go to truthtreatments.com. Check out our retinol 5% gel especially, as well as our Truth Serum, Truth Balm, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side. I want to continue talking about cancer as it regards our steroid hormones, which play an important role in carcinogenesis, particularly estrogen and cortisol. Also, uh, there's, a, there's a role for the ketogenic diet, for fasting, for caloric restriction when it comes to understanding cancer, for understanding how to deal with it, for preventing cancer, as well as slowing down its progression. The dietary link to cancer, in my opinion, is, is the ultimate key to how we deal with the problem, which is an epidemic, and it isn't getting much better. Since 1975, uh, incidence of cancer has increased slightly, mortality has decreased slightly, but really we haven't made much progress at all. And I would present that the main reason is because we have not really understood the link between our foods and our digestion and cancer. And I'm not talking about cancer-killing foods. I'm not talking about special fruits or herbs that kill cancer. I'm talking about how the toxicity of what we're eating and a broken down digestive system is related to to the initiation of cancer and how changing what we eat and how correcting digestive problems can be so important and so relevant when it comes to dealing with the disease. Cancer is a metabolic condition. That means it involves energy. There's a really cool book if you're interested in, it's kind of scientific and technical, but it's super, super important for folks who want to understand cancer. It's called Cancer as a Metabolic Disease. It's a textbook, and it is somewhat science-y, but man, is this an important book when it comes to understanding what cancer is really all about. It's a metabolic condition. That means it involves energy and how the body provides energy, which of course is going to implicate oxygen. That's the respiratory link to cancer and that's important, and then it's gonna also involve sugar and food, which are, these are the three basic elements of energy. Oxygen, sugar, and food. 
So if you have, uh, if you understand that cancer is a metabolic or an energy condition, then obviously the major elements of energy, which are food, oxygen, and sugar, are going to be involved. And also, that also means that the cell is involved. Now that seems obvious that it's the cell that's involved, but that's not how medicine approaches cancer. Medicine approaches cancer by focusing on tumors and by focusing on the obvious growths. Now, that makes sense. I'm not, I'm not saying that's a wrong thing, but that's not where the cancer begins. Now, sure, that's, by the time a doctor notices the problem, it's at the growth level or the tumor level. But our control is not at the tumor level, it's at the cell level. At the tumor level, we just have to radiate it or kill it or or excise it, and I'm not saying that that's not sometimes necessary, but our control over the process is at the cell level, and cancer is a cell issue. It's not primarily a tumor issue, and by the way, it's not primarily a genetic issue. Yes, genetics are involved, they're involved in everything, but it's not like one gene causes cancer. Oh, I have the gene for cancer. I have the BRCA gene, that means I gotta have a mastectomy. That's not how it works. Yes, genes are involved. And yes, if you have a tumor or growth, that's a problem. But our control is in the middle. It's at the cell level. Genes are responsive to what the cell is experiencing. Genes turn on and off like Christmas tree lights, depending on what the cell is sitting in or what the cell is experiencing. Genes turn on and off in response to messages that are coming to it from the cell, from the cell's interior first and from the cell's membrane, which in turn is responding to the environment. So cell sitting in an environment, the membrane is reading the environment, it's processing the information from the environment that makes the cell membrane an information processor. Bruce Lipton talks about this in his book, The Biology of Belief. Really, really cool book and very easy to read. If you're interested in how whole, this whole thing works, Bruce Lipton is one of the one of the foremost proponents of the idea that the cell membrane and the environment that the cell is sitting in is what controls the genes. You're not going to hear that from the medical model. They want to control the genes themselves. They want to create medicines and create uh, drugs and create special kinds of chemicals that will change the genes. We don't need to do that. We need to change the environment that the cell is sitting in, and that's where we have our control. This gives us power. Understanding the relationship between the outside part of a cell, the, the, the stuff a cell is sitting in, and the genetics is our power. The genetic model steals our power. We control our genetics by our life choices, and that's what controls what the cell is sitting in. And folks, that is power. That is control over our body because the environment is in our control for the most part. All disease is cell disease, and that includes cancer. And because all cell disease is based on three things, starvation, suffocation, and toxification, these are, we have power here. We have control here. Who is it that controls what a cell eats? We do. Who is it that controls how well a cell is respirating? We do. Who is it that controls the toxicity that a cell is sitting in? We do. There ain't no drugs for this. There's no drugs that can feed a cell or breathe a cell or clean a cell. None. There's nothing in the doctor's magic bag of tricks that can feed a cell, breathe a cell, or detoxify a cell. Of course, after you get the starvation, suffocation, and toxification, you get inflammation. Leads to more starvation, suffocation, and toxification, and that's where disease begins. And that's why it spirals out of control, and that's why doctors are helpless, impotent, can do nothing to reverse this process. Because the cell isn't going to take a doctor's medicine. All a doctor can do is trick the cell in, into taking the drug by disguising a chemical so it looks like something friendly to the cell, resulting in some kind of suppression of a process that the cell does, or a doctor can radiate a cell or, or, or excise the cell, but they cannot feed the cell, they cannot breathe the cell, they cannot clean the cell, but that doesn't matter because we can do it ourselves. I'm Pharmacist Ben, you're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open for you at 
844-236-6010. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you have a comment or a success story you'd like to share, if you've read something in the paper or heard it on the news and you want clarification, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products or our Truth Skin Health products, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Of course, if you're interested in purchasing any of the longevity products, you can head over to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team, and you and I can help change the world together right off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, so we're talking about cancer. We're talking, I'm going to spend a couple more days talking on this really important subject. I don't, you know, there's tons of tons of books and articles and stories on the internet or uh, research on the internet about killing cancer but I take a different approach I like to think of not just killing cancer but but making the body strong enough so it can deal with cancer this idea really it takes advantage it leverages the power of the human body to heal itself and that's what the bright side is all about the power of the human body to heal itself the control we have over our health issues over our health challenges that's the take-home message every day on this program the control we have over our chronic long-term degenerative diseases including cancer the emperor of all maladies so cancer is a metabolic disease it's a energy disease cells are not somehow they're not able to do what they need to do so they they go backwards in time to a time when they divided really, really rapidly. Dividing rapidly seems to be one, uh, one of the ways the body, uh, cells cope with this lack of energy that's caused from toxicity, caused from starvation, and caused from suffocation. So this out of control cell growth ends up creating these immature, less than functional cells. So you get all of these cells growing really fast and because they're growing so fast, they don't have time to mature. Not only are they growing in this out of control fashion, but they're non-functional or they're less than functional. Interestingly, if you take a cell and you put it into a healthy environment, it reverts back to normalcy. Cells can revert back to normalcy. Cancer cells can revert back to normal cells. And this has been shown many times, that cancer cells can turn backwards and they can become healthy cells. That's powerful information, folks. That means that the, once a cell is cancerous, it's not doomed necessarily. It can change. One of the ways it can change is by putting it into a normal environment, a healthy environment with lots of food and lots of, and when I say food, I'm talking the mighty 90 essential nutrients, lots of oxygen, and a, a, clean, a clean environment. And by the way, sugar represents a toxin in addition, to, of course, to drugs. Yeah, drugs represent toxins. So prescription drugs are carcinogenic. It doesn't matter what it says in the package insert or if it's been FDA approved. Just by definition, they're going to create a toxicity that can lead to cancer. So anyway, you take a, a, a cell is capable of reverting back. A cancer cell is capable of reverting back to a normal, healthy cell. There are switches that can be turned on. They're doing it in the laboratory now. They're artificially doing it, but you can also do it by taking a cancer cell and putting it in a normal environment. That indicates that there's some mechanism in the environment or the medium that a cell is sitting in that controls its growth. Under ordinary circumstances, under ordinary healthy circumstances, cell growth is controlled by the environment. This is really amazing feedback that takes place from the environment to the cell, the cell to the environment. They're in constant communication. So yeah, all disease is cell disease, but you can't really separate the cell from its environment. In fact, there's a, a, the, the three parts, the cell, the membrane, and the environment form what is called the matrosome. And this matrosome is this nexus of health or disease. The cell, the membrane, and the stuff that the cell is sitting in. There's, if you can kind of picture a living cell sitting in an environment, you can zoom in to where the cell membrane is, and you can see three parts. You can see the inside of a cell, the membrane, and the environment. And these three areas, they're called the matrosome, or the nexus of health, or the lack thereof. That's why that environment that the cell is sitting in is so important. And it's not just the local environment, by the way. It's not just the environment that the cell is sitting in. It's, it's, set, it's not just the environment that the cell is sitting in. It's also the environment that we are sitting in, that our body is sitting in. 
That includes the air that we breathe. That includes the water we drink. That includes the foods that we eat. Do I need to tell you how toxic everything is? How the air is filled with particulates and chemtrails and pollutants and poisons and the water we drink? Oh my God, the water we drink? How can we not have a cancer epidemic when we're drinking fluoridated water and chlorinated water and antibiotic water and God knows what other kind of toxins are in the water? And then, of course, the food we eat? How can we not have a cancer epidemic? And then you throw in the psychological and emotional and mental environment that our, that our mind is sitting in. You can't not have a problem with cancer. So number one, it's critical to understand that the environment impacts carcinogenesis, cancer. According to a 2008 article in the Journal of Pharmaceutical Research, only 5 to 10% of cancer cases are genetically inevitable, while, quote, 90 to 95% have their roots in the environment and lifestyle. I would say it's even more than that. But even, even the scientific literature shows that 5 to 10%, according to this article anyway, 5 to 10% are genetic, genetically inevitable. 90 to 95% have their roots in the environment and the lifestyle. The fact that cancer cells can revert, can become normal again, this also indicates something very, very important. It indicates that remission is possible. Cancer does not have to be a death sentence. Cancers remit it's recognized. It's not, it's not uh, airy-fairy. It's in the scientific literature. Cancer cells can become normalized. Cancers can remit. They call it spontaneous remission because they can't figure out why, but it's not spontaneous. It's how the body works. It's not accidental. Spontaneous means, oh, it just happens. No, it's part of the body's processes. And cancer cells themselves can be normalized in a laboratory setting and in an in, uh, in environment in the environment, like a test tube environment or petri dish environment. Last August, scientists at the Mayo Clinic announced that they had turned aggressive breast, lung, and bladder cancer cells into harmless, benign cells. The year before, 2014, Australian scientists did the exact same thing with leukemia cells. So cancer cells can revert. We have to change the environment. There's things we have to do. There's, uh, you know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. So we got to stop doing the same thing over and over again. We got to change how we live our lives. But the upside is, is we can beat cancer or we can avoid cancer. Cancer cells a rogue cell. It's growing like a unicellular organism. Usually when cells grow in the body, they form teams. They form organs or they form tissues. So they divide in this kind of organized fashion that allows them to form the liver or to form bone or to form muscle. This is really an amazing thing how this happens. Cancer cells don't do this. Cancer cells only live for themselves. They don't live for us and they don't live to become an organ. They live for themselves like a unicellular organism, like a bacteria. Bacteria don't form bacterial arms and bacterial legs. Bacteria cells just grow individually. And that's what a cancer cell is doing. It doesn't care about anybody but itself. I hear a metaphor there. Anyway, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we are back on the bright side. Got lines open for you. I'll get to your calls here in just a minute. If you're on hold, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, if you want to check out our Retinol 5% Gel and find out what so many people have already found out that you can use this stuff for hyperpigmentation, dark spots, wrinkles, acne. It's a wonderful anti-aging product. Helps soften the skin. I just got a note from my friend Eileen. Hello, Eileen, if you're listening. She said uh, it's good for bug bites, and I've heard that before, actually, that it uh, helps take away the itch from bug bites. Retinol's amazing stuff. And our Retinol 5% gel, our Truth Retinol 5% gel, is also made with vitamin C, and a lot of it. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, water, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. Okay, 844 oh, by the way, it's truthtreatments.com if you want to check it out, truthtreatments.com. Okay, from Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center, many with migraines have vitamin deficiencies, say study. I talked to 
uh, says study. I talked to George Norrie about this a couple of weeks ago, or last week, I believe. Uh, vitamin D, vitamin B2, coenzyme Q10 are all found to be deficient in kids who have migraines. Not surprising. All of these are electrical kinds of substances, and migraine headaches involve electrical energy in the brain. They involve how blood flows in the brain, combination of neurology, neurological problems, as well as changes in blood flow. If you're dealing with migraine headaches, the two things you want to think about are the hormone estrogen, as well as perhaps digestive health issues between digestion, food intolerances, food allergies, and stabilizing estrogen or balancing out estrogen. You have your two two of your most important strategies for dealing with migraine headaches. Elimination diet can help, food diary, and then eliminate, uh, eliminate problem foods, look for problem foods, and then balancing out estrogen with progesterone and pregnenolone, and of course using all of your electrical nutrients, particularly the B vitamins, vitamins B2, vitamin B12, and niacin. Magnesium also plays a role when it comes to migraine headaches and also omega-3 fatty acids. You know, most migraines involve headaches, but not all migraines do. You can have digestive uh, uh, GI effects like uh, nausea associated with migraine. You can have pain all over the body or, or uh, 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 the kind of, uh, what do they call it, pins and needles sensation all over the body that doesn't involve headaches, although most migraines do involve headaches. Starving cancer cells by blocking their metabolism. Check that out. How do you like that? That's from the journal Genes and Development. Where'd you hear that before? You starve cancer cells. You reduce their, uh, their metabolism. You slow things down. This is where fasting comes in. This is where sugar restriction, caloric restriction comes in. Caloric restriction actually can help your chemotherapy work better. Cannabis use during pregnancy may affect brain development and offspring. Oh, no kidding. Your kid's getting stoned. Your baby's getting stoned if you're smoking pot. When you're pregnant, both you and your baby are getting high. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Idaho and welcome Wes to the bright side. What's up, Wes? Good morning. Wes? Hello! Uh, I'm going to put you back on hold. I can't hear you, Wes. I'm not sure what happened to Wes there. We'll put you back on. I'll get you here in a second. Check your phone, Wesley. Todd in Portland, welcome to the bright side. Todd? Do we got Todd? Hmm. How interesting. Todd. Let's see here. I guess we're having some phone problems. Ben? Hey, Wes, ben, I got you. Can you hear me now? Yes, I hear you now. Ben. What's going on, Wes? Can you hear me now? Yes, I hear you now, Wes. What's going on? Wes? Ben. Yes, Wes. I'm going to put you back on hold, Wes. I can I, I hear you loud and clear. Well, okay. I was, I got when got coffee. Okay, what's going on, man? How can I help you? Okay, uh, you're the expert on skin medications. I found a dozen books, PDF on urine therapy. Do you want to comment on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Urine therapy for the skin. I assume you're talking about, right? Right. Oh, urine therapy is very interesting stuff. It's been used to treat cancer, by the way. Dr. Stanislaw Brzezinski uh, talks about using it, or at least he writes about using it for cancer. There's a really cool book. You may have heard of it. It's kind of a classic. It's called uh, Can uh, Urine, Urine, Your Own Perfect Medicine. I think that's the name of it. i got to yeah. remember. Hey, is that that's what I was saying. There's a dozen books for free, PDF on the Internet. You know what? I'm going to check that out, unless you want to send me a link or something to uh, Ben at KSEO.com, but I'll check that out. As far as the skin goes, much of the dry weight, urine's about 90 to 95% water, but much of the dry weight of urine is the stuff called urea, and urea is one of the all-time great skin moisturizers. I've been using it in, I formulated a cream for calluses using urea, and urea is actually an old-time pharmacy remedy. Uh, mixing urea with lactic acid makes an incredible skin softener. Urea Urea itself is a wonderful skin softener, and uh, probably two, maybe two or three percent of your urine uh, is after water. Say 95 percent of urine is water, 90 to 95 percent, about two or three percent of it is urea. And so, yeah, it makes perfect sense to using it for the skin. You got to get over, you know, the unpleasant, unsavory nature, perhaps, of urine. But I don't know why it's unsavory. It's just a bodily fluid, and it happens to be sterile if you're healthy. So, um, depends yeah. on what you're eating. 
yeah, but you're, the kidneys, if you're healthy, your kidneys are going to filter stuff out. So your urine is not necessarily inherently problematic, although you have to get over the mental psychological issues probably with it. Uh, indigenous cultures wash their hair with it, and, and definitely uh, people have been using it as moisturizer as a moisturizer for centuries. And it is, it is, a, it is a skin softening and moisturizing uh, liquid. And aside from the psychological unsavoriness of it, there's no problem. It's actually good stuff. Does that help you? Yeah. Good deal. Yeah, Take, I wanted to hear what you thought of it. You should check it out and let us know. You got your own, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, buddy. Good to talk to you, Wes. Have a great Thank day, you. man. Thank you. All right, let's see if we get uh, Todd back. Todd in Portland, or TJ in Portland. Is that you, TJ? Yeah. Yep. Are you, are you the guy who called? Are you Todd? Yep. Okay, what's up, Todd? How can I help you? A friend of mine, she is turning 60 next month, and she started on bio, bioidentical hormones, and she is saying good things about it, but I'm reading bad things about it. I'd like to get your opinion. You don't want to mess with your hormones, in my opinion. However, if she likes it, she likes it. You know, you're just playing with fire. When you, take, when you use nutrition to build your hormones, then your body has some safety, has a control over it. It can make hormones if necessary or not make them if not necessary. But if you override that system and just put the hormones directly into the body, that's where you run into problems. And let's make no mistake about it. Bioidentical is a marketing term thought up by advertisers in a room somewhere. And no medical professional should ever say bioidentical. It, there's nothing that's bioidentical that you can make. And I used to make these hormone creams a lot. Usually what they'll do is they'll mix up some uh, three types of estrogen, uh, estradiol, estrone, or, and estriol, or sometimes they'll do two types. They call it triest or biased. Sometimes they'll mix in a little testosterone, sometimes a little DHEA. And yeah, you're going to bump up your hormone levels, but the body it wants to control those things. It's not, they're not meant to, uh, you're not meant to override these systems. If you're going to do bio, I hate that term, but if you're going to do hormones, uh, natural hormones, uh, you know, they're not even natural, but if you're going to do this, these kinds of hormones, use the creams. At least you'll have some, your body will have some control over how much gets into your blood rather than the, the oral or, uh, they have these oral, uh, capsules and, and tablets and trochees that go under, under your tongue. So I recommend the cream if you're going to do it and, uh, be really careful. That's for sure. Look, watch out for things like jitteriness if you're using estrogen or inflammatory. Uh, hang on, I'll finish up when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Todd in Portland, Oregon. Let's find Todd here. Todd, you there? TJ. Todd. Yes, I'm, I'm here. Okay, so yeah, so there's no bioidentical hormones. It's just a marketing term. Uh, the worst, well, first of all, if you're jitter, if you notice jitteriness when you're on the or, or problems sleeping when you're on hormone therapy or weight problems when you're on hor hormone therapy, those are all things that you want to be careful of. Here's the biggest problem I see: if you're not eating correctly or you're somehow unhealthy. And then you jack up the body with hormones. You're really going. You're really playing with fire. The body, the uh, the hormones are responsive to how healthy we are. So if we're not healthy and we just stick hormones in the system and we're still not healthy, that's where you run into problems. And that's why things like cancer are associated with hormone, with uh, with uh, uh, hormone replacement therapy. Uh, there are all kinds of. I'm not a fan. Put it that way. If she feels better, she feels better, and I, who, I can't argue with that. But I'm not a big fan. What she might want to do, if she is on hormone replacement therapies, make absolutely sure she's taking care of her blood sugar issues, digestive health issues, and calming the body down, which are the three basic things that everybody has to do to stay healthy. Does that help, TJ, okay. Tomas, or Todd? <laughs> Thank you. That helps a lot. Thank you. All right, man. Take care. All right. Let's go to Charlotte in California. What's going on? Welcome to the Bright Side, Charlotte. This is Dr. Ben. Pharmacist, pharmacist Ben. That's me. Hi, I'm a retired RN. Oh, nice. Uh, Are you, do you, have you been listening? from ha ER to hospice. Anyway, awesome. Have you listened to the show before? Charlotte, hang on. Have you listened to the show before? No, my sister in Florida told me to call you yesterday. Okay, all right. She so you're. To yeah. you. She's on your email. Nice. Well, I hope you start listening. I love it when RNs listen to yeah, the program. So we love I RNs. I have in my right lower lung. Yeah. My right middle lobe has bronchiectasis. My right lower lobe has 
Mac. Um, mycobacterium avium. Got it. I have nodules. One nodule is eight millimeters. Okay. Well, here's the deal, my dear, because you haven't listened to the program. It doesn't. None of that matters. You got a lung problem. You got a respiratory problem. Okay. And now, for an you, alternative to antibiotics. Yes. Well, here's the deal. If you have a bacterial issue, I don't know necessarily that I would use an alternative to antibiotics. As much as I don't like antibiotics, sometimes right. they're necessary. What this I'd be more concerned about is what what's going on in the system that's causing your respiratory the, the lungs to become inflamed and infected. That's really where I would, would wonder, and I would be looking for other symptoms. And that's really one of the main strategies here on the bright side, is you got secondary symptoms and you got fundamental symptoms, or fundamental problems, I should say, and secondary symptoms. What you're describing, MAC disease, et cetera, a lung disease, is a secondary symptom. There's a fundamental problem underneath. And the fundamental problems involve something getting into the blood that's uh, suppressing immunity or somehow leading to some kind of inf infection. You probably yeah, have other health compressed. Well, I had cancer 10 years ago. Okay, now we're talking here. So the body is somehow compromised. Chemo, so we, I'm immunocompromised, and yes. that's why the doctor said I got it. Yes, exactly what I'm saying. I didn't, I'm didn't. i not a doctor. I'm not your doctor, but I, I know this is how it works. You're compromised. So we got to get you uncompromised. All right. So the first now, you, in the short term, you have an acute problem here. So in the short term, you may need an antibiotic. I'm not saying you don't need an antibiotic, but in the long term, we got to build up your immune system. We got to right. build up your body's re resilience, and it starts in the gut. And as you, right. I'm sure you understand, the, there's a major relationship between immunity and the microbiome. The, right, the back, I do. Okay, I knew you would understand it because you're an RN. So you got to start focusing on the gut. Listen, I'm guaranteeing you. Even though I never met you, I'm guaranteeing you, you got a digestive health challenge. You must know it. You're a nurse. You must yeah. know it. Okay? This is where you got to focus on. As I'm toxins. On 70 billion. What's that? Probiotics. Okay, you're supplementing. That's good. Make sure you're eating fermented food. Here's the yeah. most important thing, though. You got to look for food, in, uh, food intolerances or allergens. And that requires a, a, uh, a uh, food diary and then keeping track of foods and then eliminating the problem ones. As toxins get into the blood through a leaky gut, which I'm almost 100% guaranteed you have, mm -hmm. as toxins get into the blood, the immune system becomes more and more overwhelmed. You don't have, with, with a history of cancer and now lung, disease, lung uh, uh, issues, you mm -hmm. can't be overwhelming that immune system. So, right. so you have to patch up the gut and eliminate the entrance of toxins in through the gut. Patching, uh, eliminating the, the entrance of toxins, i.e. leaky gut syndrome, is, involves number one, the elimination diet, and and number two, using things like cartilage, aloe, noni, glutamine, all of which can make the gut healthy, vegetable juices with the fiber, also important for the gut. And as I'm sure you understand, there's a major relationship between liver and bile and intestinal health. So making sure... Do you think sure will help me? Yes, absolutely. You should be doing serapeptase. enzyme? Absolutely, I'd be doing proteolytic enzymes, 100%. In fact, I was about to tell you, the ultimate enzymes from longevity and the ultimate nightly essence are both good sources of enzymes. The nightly essence is also a good source of probiotics. So you should be on the nightly essence. I would be doing the Fucoid Z. And if you're not doing longevity products, head over to criticalhealthnews.com or pharmacistben.com, and you could find these products there. I, I wish I had more time to talk to you, but... Uh, I'm going to go your route. I'm going to do integrative. I'll, I think I'll do a bolus of the antibiotics. As soon as my sputum is negative, I'm going to get off. By then, hopefully, my immune system is up a little bit. And then work on the digestive systems. Keep the blood sugar stable also. If you're yes. in your 50s or 60s, you've got to have dysglycemia, messed up blood sugar, too. So keeping that stable with more protein. Whey protein is especially, especially important for the immune system if you can handle it. Not everybody can, but if you can handle whey protein, it can be very helpful for the immune system. A couple quick things for you. Vitamin yes. C, very important yeah, for lung do, health. Do a 10,000 a day. Vitamin E as well. And I'm selenium. That. Selenium also works with vitamin E. And then I something called my vitamin D. Vitamin D is good. And there's another one called NAC, which you may have heard of, and yeah, acetylcysteine. Not on it. I'll you get should on get on it. If you, had, if, you had a lung, if you had cystic fibrosis, they would put you on it. Right. Uh, so uh, make sure uh, 500 milligrams or so, and you may want to throw in something called alpha lipoic acid. I'm on that. I've been on that for years. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful, and also well, magnesium. What about arginine? Arginine's helpful. It's not a must-have, but it's definitely helpful for a lot of things. Maybe a gram or two of that a day. And, and then, then to go, but I gave myself one good tip. 
when I looked up the antibiotic cocktails, which I hate to take, yeah. I looked up the ones that pregnant women could tolerate. That's the one you're going to use? That's, that's a smart idea. That's smart, though. I mean, if they could tolerate it, maybe I can tolerate it. All right. I'm, I'm glad I'm, you called, I'm Charlotte. Check your, uh, Pharmacistben.com. I a little more closely. I had trouble finding a radio station, but bless my sister that she gave me your your hours, and I just called the 800 number. Thank I'm you for the work you do. Th thank you, Charlotte. I'm glad you called. Take care. We'll talk to you again, I hope. Bye-bye. <laughs> uh, sorry, I cut you off there. I apologize, Charlotte. All right, Jess in Michigan, got a couple minutes here. What's going on? Hi. I wanted to ask about the um, stevia. I said the longevity, longevity product. Sure. What do you want to know? Do you want to know what it is, or do you have questions specifically about it, or have you heard of it? Specifically, yes, I have. I've heard of it. I know what it is. It's a plant, uh -huh. and it's three times as sweet as sugar. But for some reason, I was looking it up on, oh, I don't know, the Internet, and it said something about uh, cancer-causing. Mm -mm. No, no, no. I don't know where you read that. It's, it's not. It's a. It's a herb. It's a plant. Listen, yeah. we've been talking about cancer now for a while. We're going to talk about it for a few more days. Nothing causes cancer directly, unless it's something super intense like radiation or something. Stevia or, or things that you hear about causing cancer. What they do is they put a burden on the cell eventually. So it's not like they you take eat stevia, you get cancer. It's like your body is compromised. Stevia, if it's the case, is a bur puts a burden on the body, and then that stresses out the cell further. Stevia doesn't do that, but you know, radiation can do it, and tobacco smoke can do it, and arsenic can do it, and other toxins can do it. Stevia is not one of those. And by the way, stevia is a lot more than three times sweeter than sugar. So you don't have to worry about causing cancer. That's not a, that that it's uh, generally recognized as safe is how they is how they put it. Although it was, there were some early studies that found. That I think uh, that it may be carcinogenic, but I don't. I don't buy into that. All righty. Well, thank you. Thank you so that's much for your call. Okay, I appreciate your call. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, that's all the time we have for today on the bright side. If you're interested in joining me in my mission to educate the world about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, love to have you on the bright side. Ben team, please call the phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Of course, you can sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team off all our websites, criticalhealthnews.com and pharmacistben.com, which have a, a blog and also uh, videos. Now that I think about it, at criticalhealthnews.com, just have, have a video on cancer coming out here, hopefully in the next couple of days. And also uh, brightsideben.com, and you can check out our archives at benfuchsarchives.com. And don't forget to look at our retinol 5% gel, Truth Serum, Truth Balm, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, all at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Thanks for listening, friends. Have yourselves an awesome, spectacular, beautiful, wonderful day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.